Hey, Lucas, it's great to talk to you. Yes, sir. Good to be here. Yeah, it's great. Uh, you know, I've uh, followed your career for a long time, and I just noticed this morning uh, that you're in, uh, like, at the time, absolutely one of my favorite movies that nobody had, uh, nobody rallied behind like I did The War, the Kevin Costner movie. I love that movie. Yeah, appreciate it. That was my first project. Yeah, and you were uh, uh, one of the, the bad the bad kids, right? That's right. I was the bad lip Nicky. <laughs> but it was such a sweet movie. I mean, so many good things. I think I, I saw it when I was in uh, uh, college, and we went through film school and kind of discussing it with my teacher, all the, the really cool themes in it, you know, uh, basically doing uh, good to those who are not doing good to you, you know, mm -hmm. and not returning evil for evil. It just had a lot of good, really good stuff in it. And of course, yeah. a lot of good quotable things too. So, awesome. Yeah, I love I love that movie. And of course, Swing Blade is is uh, just such an amazing movie as well. Yeah, appreciate that. And uh, this one, movie that's is the one that kicked the career off. Oh yeah, I'm telling you, yeah. it's uh yeah, it's just such a a touchstone or whatever. You know, it's yeah. it's like a piece of cinematic history, really. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And and good quotes in that too. Good That's good right. things to say, you know. Yeah. Uh, so this one is really cool. Legacy Peak. I saw it uh, last week, and uh, it's really it's really a cool movie as far as uh, fatherhood and and uh, basically blended family. Getting to know. I see your character is really trying to hit all the right marks, uh, but he's really a good example of integrity. Uh, I felt like the whole time. And speaking of not rendering evil for evil or not, you know, returning, <laughs> you know, rudeness for rudeness or whatever, uh, what were your thoughts on the character when you read it and uh, kind of stepping into those shoes? Yeah, uh, great question. You know, I think, um, you know, it was an answered prayer for, for, for my wife and I, um, you know, because when I left NCIS New Orleans, um, you know, the main reason was to spend more time with the family. We'd been there a long time. Uh, the, the, the show was good to us. I filmed 125 episodes, but, um, you know, I guess growing up in the entertainment business as a kid, you know, I was able to observe how, um, the business was run, what it could do to a family, uh, and the concerns I had, um, just what it was going to do to my family relationships, my wife and I's relationship and my children's relationship. And, uh, you know, the way TV operates, you know, it, it's not, uh, easy. It's, it's very fast paced, long hours, marathon. So, um, you know, I felt like that time was going to be short lived because uh, I wanted to really connect with uh, my children, you know, because they were young. They're they're 11, 9, and 7 right now. Uh, I have a girl, boy, boy. And so uh, we were praying. We were praying at, you know, we took a year rest, and we were praying the whole time, like, what the next step was going to be, you know. And then we kept seeing, uh, you know, in our culture, just this shift that was really um, – you know, lacking uh, fathers in, in the family. It was really, um, you know, things were, a, there was an attack against the nuclear family and uh, attack against Christianity. And, um, and, you know, I think for a long time in Hollywood, uh, the content of the movies has really undermined the, the father role you know, and, and right. the role as a man and manhood uh, and masculinity. And so um, when this story fell into my lap, um, all those, you know, it was an answered prayer just in the sense of God was saying, uh, this is a way you can um, get the message out there that you want to get out about fathers and also impact culture in a positive way. And so, um, so yeah, that was, that was, that was one of the, the, the main reasons I chose to do this project. 
Um, you know, I, I love how it shows the importance. This story shows the importance of a, of a uh, the need for an earthly father, uh, no matter how old you are. Like my character, you know, is in his upper thirties, and uh, he still longs for. And you can tell that there's still there's some pain there because um, his earthly father ran away right? It wasn't a good earthly father. He didn't have a good earthly father. Um, you know, the kids, they had a good earthly father. They honored him and respected him and loved him. Uh, but, you know, he was killed, you know, in the military. And so, um, and it shows how they still yearn for the presence of their father, their earthly father. Um, you know, and this story shows that Hey, um, we can rely on our heavenly father to fulfill some of those needs. Uh, and that's what my character does, which I, which I like. And I think is really powerful. And I think all of us, um, really have to rely on our earthly father to, uh, to feel whole and complete. Um, but it still shows the importance of the, of the earthly father. Uh, and so, all of those things, you know, combined just really, you know, was a project that I had to do. It was one that I had to do. My wife, when she read the script, I read it first. And I said, you got to read this script. And I said, I don't want to talk about it until you read it. And that was hard for me to do. And she read, <laughs> she was reading it and she comes up to me afterwards um, with tears in her eyes and says, I don't know why you wouldn't do this project. So um, that's why we did it. And filming a movie is quite a bit different as far as your schedule, right? It, it allows more family time, right? It's just kind of all in one fell swoop. Is that, is that how it goes? Uh, yes, it depends. It really depends on, uh, you know, the producers and the production, but you know, uh, the, my hat goes off to the leaders of this uh, project, you know, Aaron Burns and David Cook, you know, their family guys, you know, their fathers, uh, they love their wives, and they all came to the set. And so they wanted this to be a family environment. And um, they told all the cast and crew that, you know, if you wanted to bring out your families, uh, do it, we'll accommodate and find a way to make it make it work with housing and so uh and and feeding them on set and so that was just to have that kind of leadership and uh that kind of environment um you know they didn't overwork us um you know so we we worked about 10 hours a day and we could go home and still put our kids to bed and um and wake up with them in the morning if we wanted to and so that was that was a huge blessing. So yes, this this schedule was just pleasant, was such a pleasant working environment um, to be on. Lucas, uh, you've got such a uh, you got such a strong accent and a recognizable voice. <laughs> um, uh, you know, when I first watched Legacy Peak, I, I didn't I didn't really uh, your name didn't click. But when you started speaking in the movie, I was like, oh, yeah, I know exactly who, who that guy is because I've seen him in so many things, you know. Yeah. Um, I was curious if anybody, you know, how uh, some directors or whatever different shows might say, hey, let's see if you can do pull off something else. And it's so much a part of your DNA. I can't yeah. imagine anybody would tell you to play it down. But has, has anybody ever told you to do that? Uh, you know, early on in my career, there was a couple of projects that had asked me, you know, if I could, uh, if I could tone it down or, you know, <laughs> try any other accent and, uh, and I pretty much turned those roles down, you know? Uh, yeah. and so, you know, later in my career, you know, I think most producers and directors realized that it was such a distinct, you know, distinct characteristic, uh, right. uh that, you know, they were, they were going to play it and embrace it because, uh, you know, it was unique. And so yeah. it's, it's been a blessing and worked for me throughout my whole career. Yeah, totally. That's what I was thinking. You just totally lean into it. You wouldn't, 
you know, you wouldn't ask Morgan Freeman to try to do a, you know, Scottish accent or something like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so how uh, you mentioned something about, you know, how it was working on this set. Was there anything else that kind of uh, stood out to you? Have you done faith-based productions before this? Um, no, I think this was, you know, this was kind of the, well, I did seven days in utopia and it had a, it had a faith-based aspect to it, but it really wasn't like a faith-based, uh, producers or a production. Um, right. it was independently done. And so, um, you know, and get low had a spiritual aspect to it, but it definitely wasn't like in a faith-based genre. Um, so yeah, this is the first one. And it, and and I was talking to my wife about that the other day that I think it was um it was another answered prayer from God for me just as just for encouragement. Um because I think <clears throat> you know he wanted to show me that hey, there are they are people out there producers and directors and you know that are creating content that are uh, that are wanting to expand the kingdom of God and wanting to glorify my name and wanting to point people to Jesus and have yeah. the same Christian values as you do and have the same uh, family values as you do and American values as you do and so um, it was just an encouraging, uplifting uh working environment for me you know i had a lot of friends you know i i left ncis new orleans right before covid and this is just, we don't we don't have to get into all this but um you know a lot of my friends were telling me how rough it was on set what they were doing mandates protocols right. you know isolation and it was just it was terrible they were hating it uh struggling nobody was having any kind of fun and so I, I'm at home and I'm trying to uplift and encourage and pray for people. And I'm shaking my head saying it, saying it doesn't have to be this way. And so I had my own thoughts and ideas of how uh, the working environment could be. And, um, and it was that and every bit, uh, if not more on legacy peak, you know, right. Um, Good. Everybody came to work with smiling faces. Uh, nobody was, you know, trying to call people out or, you know, make it hard on anyone. And um, we all showed up with smiles on our face and uh, getting along with people and, and, and with the same goal in mind, the same agenda in mind and, uh, and created, created a wonderful project. So it's a pleasure to talk to you. Like I said, big fan, love the war, love Sling Blade and all the stuff that you've done since then. So uh, thanks, for, thanks for.